All right, I'm finally here, man. I'm telling you. Sorry, we're behind schedule. More technical difficulties. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. Sometimes I fire it up and it just is a smooth stream gets going. You know, the way these work, these live streams, is you get it going. It sends the live video feed to the host screen, my screen, before I hit the button to send that video public so that you can all see it. So I can see that it's choppy and it's not going to work before it even starts. And so sometimes I fire it up, it's smooth. Other times I fire it up, it's choppy. I still can't figure it out. But I know that when I go to speedtest.net and check the the internet speed, everything's working. But YouTube, I don't know, maybe I'm just hitting a, a bad moment on the YouTube servers or something. If you figure it out, let me know. Anyway, it's good to see you again. Thank you so much for being here and joining me live. My plan for today is to just listen to what everybody's saying and draw uh, based on whatever uh, conversation we get going here. And so uh, I just got off of the job side. I've been working. So I feel like I'm, I feel like I'm all ugly and grimy. I haven't shaved in a while. <laughs> I rushed in. I was like, oh, we got to start it up. I got to be on time th this time. And this happened. All right, we've got Anderson from Brazil. All right, good to see you, my friend. Amir is back again. Hello. And we have uh, Amir from Arizona, my home state. All right, cool. We've got Zenomoto from Gilbert. All right, awesome town. Love Gilbert, mainly because my best buddy Todd lives down there. And we've got Aaron back again. Thank you. He says it's 1145 here. I will try to stay awake. Okay, so this is late for, for you, Aaron. For some people, this is, you know, a good alternative to 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock a.m. <laughs> but for you, I see it's late. Hey, man, thanks for the honor. Uh, I'm glad that uh, my video is worth staying up for a few minutes. Especially since we started late. I won't be mad if you have to check out, man. Sleep is important. Wings and Things is back again. And... So Anderson says, no English. All right, all right. So the drawing will be more important than the talking. But in this day and age, we have Google Translate. So, so um, you know, we can always use that for questions and answers as well. All right, what else do we got going in the live chat? So uh, here's, here's my thinking. Here's my thinking as uh, we're getting going here. I want to draw, I want to show you something cool that I was thinking about. I grabbed these leaves off of the tree in my front yard as I was headed in. Oh yeah, and I should show this. Oh yeah, this big book. I have to shift my weight just to pick this thing up. It's the childhood drawing book. So this is a good opportunity uh, for me to show the, the, you know, where I came from. This is how I learned to draw was I just kept doing it all my life and my my parents were were uh, so good about saving things very strategic they couldn't save everything I think it would fill this entire room if they saved everything but I've got all of this stuff here so I'm gonna flip through and see if there's anything interesting to look at remember my first drawing here for those of you that didn't see it uh, last time <laughs> Joe's book says Mary yes yes we've got the book out so I'm gonna go like this and flip the camera over. We've got the overhead view now. This is the drawing that I'm looking at. And so this, here's the fun thing, is this is my first drawing ever. See right here? And it says, Joe, age three. That's my mom's writing right there. And I did it with the blue marker. And then this is maybe similar. The time frame is similar. I don't know if I was three here. Let's see. I hesitate to take these out of the out of the wrapper. Now I'll just leave it in there. But you know why I put this one in here? Because this was one of my son Joseph's first drawings. Look at this. Isn't that funny? He drew this right around age three, maybe age four. 
this is my son, Joseph. This is me. So, you know, I was like, oh, man, I got to put them side by side in this book. So fun. So this must have been a gift for somebody. Man, all of these ancient things. It seems ancient to me. Right here we've got children author greeted by special, special decoration. <laughs> I'm not going to show you that. A school award. Okay, wait, let's find a good drawing here. Let's keep this. Okay, all of you Native Americans out there, I need to apologize. There's a little bit of uh, <laughs> a little bit of racial misunderstanding in all of us. Look at this. <laughs> I drew a, I drew what I would have called an Indian back then. Man, that's funny. <laughs> Look, there's some learning some pants right there. We've got this one here, a snake and an eagle. Look at this. This is a real winner. Right here, we've got some animal studies happening early on. You know, this faintly jogs my memory. I remember studying birds' beaks and learning for the first time, okay, okay, the beak is not a straight line across the face. The beak attaches, you know, more forward at the top than goes back along the mouth. I was just learning that and learning that the wings have joints. So, you know, you learn things one by one, little by little by little. And so it's fun for me to go back through this and see how I, how I progressed in uh, learning different details and then just adding them together. You know, I was just learning for the first time that a pumpkin has sections to it, trying to figure out how to make a natural looking. <laughs> it was a school assignment, no doubt. Let's see what else we've got in here. So here, Joe, 1987. How was it? I was born in 79. So in 87, that makes me eight years old. And so now, age eight, I've got a lot more, lot more detail work happening. This is a, a ballpoint pen. And this is pencil right here. This one, this one is in pencil and Man, I, at age eight, all I wanted to do was be out in the fields, you know, just looking at, at uh, whatever little critters I could find. Catching frogs was a very popular pastime for us growing up in, in Ohio. I wish someone would help me make my wishes come true. That's what I wrote right there. <laughs> I don't know why. Wow, man, look at that giraffe. Look at this thing. So, you know, I went through an entire phase of drawing giraffe, uh, not giraffes, of drawing different kinds of animals. So my guess is this was not the only giraffe I did during that time. Date 1987. Look, someone taught me to date my work. I was doing it back then. And then here we have another one dated 1987. This one too. We've got a dragon, one of my first one of my first dragons here. We've got this. <laughs> oh man. You know, do you remember before before people started illustrating dinosaurs with their tails up uh horizontally? You know, when people do dinosaurs, modern uh uh belief on dinosaurs is that they did not sit upright and drag their tails, but if you remember the old textbooks, you know, the, the old science books showing pictures of dinosaurs, they were all upright, all the old illustrations. And so I used that upright position. I learned to draw like dinosaurs and dragons that way based on what people must have thought they looked like. Isn't that funny? It's, it's a uh, little piece of history for me now. I'm just uh, pulling this, this paper out from under this, this book right here. I'm using a new table that I built here. Here we have 1987 right there as well. Boy, we might stay in 1987 for a while. So we've got a sea turtle, a triceratops. Look at that. I was just drawing, drawing pictures out of books. Uh, man, I really felt like this was super good at the time I drew it. I really felt like I had accomplished something great. And not to say I didn't, you know, it's, it's progress, real. I think this was one of the first drawings where I was I was really starting to put together light and shadow. You know, you can see I, 
I was I was thinking it through, you know, I was thinking about the light side, the dark side. Studying anatomy, you know, we got lots of stuff. Oh, it's a perch. Must have been labeled the drawing I was certificate of, of attendance. Oh man, George Washington Elementary School. And field day, we did good at field day, you know, but you don't need to see those parts of my childhood. We're looking at drawings here. Let's see what else we got. Now this was fun. My brothers and I received an art scholarship here. And I'm gonna I'm gonna be done with this in a moment, you know, but since there's not that many of you, we're just having fun with some history. Uh, and and uh, those of you that are watching, you know, you're you're I feel like I feel like we're we're buddies. We're just hanging out looking at some silly stuff. So so uh, I'm gonna take some time to to uh, show you this. But we went to the Columbus School of Art. We got accepted there. We had a scholarship, but as it turned out, it was a very short, it was more like a hook than it was a scholarship. We went there and uh, they we had a couple a couple uh, fun lessons. And that was one time I got to sit side by side other artists that were uh, very close to my same ability level. And it was great for me to, to see that I might not be the only artist in the world. You know, you grow up, Having people tell you, you're amazing, you're amazing, you're going to be famous. You start to think that you're the only one, you know. It says, James, Pete, and Joseph Cornelius, second grader, competed for the scholarship. With 1,200 students from Central Ohio, the Cornelius brothers each had to complete an art piece, which was judged the by the college. Cool. All right, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Just fun. Fun that we have that uh, clipping safe. What's this? By Joe and Jillian. Must have been a classmate. I'm embarrassed about this drawing, so I'm not even going <laughs> to... Oh, man. It's probably... Oh, it's just a piece. I thought it was like a story. All I did was just say who it's by. I thought I wrote something. Man, I'm telling you, so much of my childhood, I'm going to look at this, so much of my childhood reflects a uh, very poor understanding of other ethnicities. Not, not that, the, I mean, I don't know what's, I don't know if that this is really, it just makes me think of it. You know, we just, we didn't live in the world we live in today where I can talk to somebody from Brazil and learn how, how alike we are. You know, it was just like the uh, far, far and mysterious peoples of the world that were not in our little, little hometown. They were strange and different. And so I drew pictures of, of things in my imagination of strange people far away. As it turns out, they're not strange at all. You know, they're just like anybody. Monsters, learning about monsters. I was getting creative here. We've got... <laughs> Who knows what that is? Then we got this right here. Let me see if I've got this on camera here. Let's flip it over. What in the world is that thing? So this is where I was really starting to get creative, you know, starting to really experiment with different shapes. Oh man, weird, weird animal. Oh, nice swan though. That that's not bad. Look at that swan. That's like a jump. I wonder if we jumped a couple years here. The three space travelers. Let's see if we've got any good ones here. Let's skip skip ahead a few years. Let's see what we've got. Joe. Oh, family pictures. Look at that. Oh, man. This is me right here. How do you like that hair? I really thought that I looked amazing. I honestly did. And then my hair looked like this. I don't know if you can see that here. I'll zoom in for you. That there's been pictures posted. I don't know if there's any still online, but we can zoom in so that you can see that. This is how it was when I first got married. Right there, there's me and my me and my four brothers, and so right there we have. Hang on, I'm gonna focus this. I'm gonna focus this camera. Right there we have uh, my brother Ben that does all my video editing here. And then we have me right here and my awesome dreadlocks. Man, what a mess that was. 
my brother Pete, he's the troublemaker of us all. And there's James, he's the oldest. And there's Johnny, he's the baby of the family. He's the one that passed away. So these are the four of us that are still trying to outlive each other. <laughs> all right. Oh man, look at that. Look at that crazy beast. I'm getting creative right there. So I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop. I know I'm eating up a whole bunch of, of uh, valuable time here on this. So I won't keep going through this book. But it's fun looking back at history here, seeing that I just drew and I drew and I drew. I just drew one picture after another. Here's a self-portrait. Look at this one. This one's pretty fun. That is a self-portrait. I can't turn it. It's going to hit my computer because it's a big book, so I can't turn it all the way straight. Here, I'll lift it like this. Man, must have been one of my first ones. First ones ever. And I don't even know what that is. That's a little bit scary to look at. That one, that looks like a police sketch. Right there. You know, I would like to try that. I would like to volunteer my time to do a police sketch. You know, try to sketch someone from somebody's somebody's description wow i actually remember drawing this one it's crazy years ago i don't know the date on these but i was oh 1989 look 1989 right there all right i'm gonna close it up i don't want to bore everybody we're gonna draw something i want to show you these leaves that i found in my front yard because as i'm doing this job i'm just trying to close this giant but as I'm, as I'm doing this uh, job that I'm working on right now, I, I've been painting. It's, it's boring, but you know, it's, it's good. It's easy, and it, and it's good for me to be on a job, you know, <laughs> doing something that makes me feel like a real productive worker. I'm painting leaves all over the wall, one leaf after another, just like silhouettes, you know, adding a little color, but. Uh, this is something I've really found to be a great way to get paying jobs is to be able to quickly produce shapes like like uh, leaves and butterflies and uh, swoopy designs, things that I can do with a few strokes of a brush if I understand the patterns that I'm looking at. So as I've been painting this on the wall, I'm thinking, man, this is pretty fun just learning the, the uh, patterns in leaves and being able to just quickly reproduce them. Uh, from imagination I don't need a stencil and I can do all these different shapes so so look at this we've got uh, before before I before I show you uh, these 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 leaves uh, uh, that I found and talk about my main point for drawing I just want to see if there's anything I need to answer here in the live chat oh Mary says sorry to hear about Johnny well, I think we're all recovered just fine. We're a happy bunch of brothers, so don't feel too bad for us. After all, we're no exception. Everybody, Everybody's going through the same thing. You know, we all have to lose people. We have to... That's the bummer, isn't it? But we're doing great. Melanie Culver. All right. Thanks for being here. Thanks for uh, sharing part of your time. Yeah, yeah for sure. I think it's boring for a lot of people, but I know that there's a number that, that uh, have asked about that from time to time. So I'm glad I finally pulled out that book I've been talking about. But uh, thanks, for, thanks for taking the, the time to let me show that off, you know. It's something I think about very fondly now that I'm 40, but, but uh, it was very embarrassing for me, you know. My childhood was just a giant pile of awkward moments. Okay. <clears throat> Um, looking, looking for anything that I got to answer. No, nope, no, nope, nothing that we do. They do police sketches on a computer now. Well, oh, so like there's not a person involved. Is that what you mean? Because I still feel like I could do it well on a computer if there's a person involved. Okay. So now I want to show you these leaves right here. I'm going to cut to this. And if you look at this, if you look at these leaves, here's what is really cool about these okay here's my drawing paper and when you look at a maple leaf look how we have the entire leaf in each section here let me get one that's not let me get one that's not uh, all curled over 
And so it's fun. We can reproduce this. I can reproduce this in like 60 seconds with a paintbrush or a real nice, well, maybe not all the veins and everything, but that pattern with all the paints, point <laughs> paints, with all of the points, I can reproduce that very quickly because I noticed the pattern and how to build it. So five stems, we do the first stem and then we do the two starring out like this. We kind of make a five pointed star and you can choose how much shorter you make those two. So one, two, three, that's the leaf right there. That's the pattern is these, these three stems. And so the reason this has these five distinct stems is because this is the edge of this, this uh, one of the three leaves. So we have the whole leaf right here. We have the whole leaf right here. And then we have the whole leaf again right here. And so if we just reproduce those, we go one, two, three. And then we put, sorry, my hands are not steady. They keep shaking. So I switch hands, trying to make them more steady. My right hand is so much more steady than my left. Look at this. I hold it with my right. And then I hold it with my left. Oh, unsteady muscles. <laughs> They're not used to that position. Okay, so we have the whole leaf reproduced. And so all I have to do is make those main spikes. Watch how quick I can draw this. It's fun being able to uh, just whip this out. So you want to draw a maple leaf. Watch one, okay, one stem. And then we go two, three. Let's make sure this one is the longest. And then we're going to take this one and we'll put one and two. It's this, it shares this same stem. So we put a stem off of here, a stem off of here. And this is our four or five. Here's our five stems. Okay, so now this one is going to come out like this and have, here we're going to put the entire leaf on this end and look how it's, look how it's right about, you know, there's, there's this, ratio that you always see in nature, you know, commonly referred to as the golden ratio. And so you can see it here. This leaf repeats its pattern right here at the, uh, at the 0.618 divide. So if you, if you had this, you know, line divided, this segment here that would make this leaf would be something close to the 0.618 uh, percentage of, of the, the whole line right here. And so they call this, they call that, you know, the golden ratio and it ends up repeating and repeating and repeating and all kinds of things in nature. But anyway, all I need to know is it's like a little more than half. And so I can come in here and go a little more than half and go one, two, and then we're ready to put some spikes on these leaves. So we go like this one, two, and then we go one right here, put a spike on here, put a little spike on here. Then we come down here, we're going to make every single stem is going to end up being its own little miniature leaf. So same thing for this one. We're going to go like this, like that. We're going to go right here, make this one. So it's fun being able to just whip this out with a, with a paintbrush. We'll go here, make this little leaf like that. You see? So we can very quickly just put this together and have these uh, uh, very natural looking segments on a leaf. And look, once you understand this pattern, you can make all kinds of, uh, you can make, uh, what am I trying to say? All kinds of different leaves with this pattern. This is how the veins go, like that. And so then if we want to do like a English ivy leaf, it's very similar to this. We just make the, we just make the one, two, three, four, five. But now we're just kind of doing a, a soft curve around it like this, like that. And then you can make the veins going off this way, make the veins going off this way, that way. I love patterns. You know, I feel like this has been the key to my ability to work from imagination is finding patterns in nature so that I can reproduce them. So it makes it real easy for me, you know. Uh, so when I'm painting a leaf like this, this is kind of funny. When I'm, when I'm painting a maple leaf, this is how I do it. I go, 
I go like this. Rather than trying to paint the one leaf, the second leaf, I don't try to paint all those different leaves. I just wanted to show you that awesome pattern. But here's my method. I'll paint a stroke like this. So a paintbrush, you know, you can just lay it down like that. You can just make a stroke. If I get a brush, I'll run and grab one real quick. I use this kind of, I use this kind of brush when I'm painting. And I'll go like this light pressure and these are all glued together real sharp when you have when you have paint in the brush more pressure squishes it out less pressure gets thinner 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 and then it pulls off leaves a point so this shape is very quick and easy to make so i'll do one and then i'll go two like this i got to make sure it's shorter than this and i just think about you know a little more than kind of like there was that pattern on the leaf a little more than halfway each of these is more than half as long as the one that they stem from. So more than half as long. So let's say that's more than half as long as this one. This one is more than half as long as this one as well, like this. And then I make this one more than half, half as long as this one, because I'm making another little leaf here. This one is a little more than half this one. And now I've made a great looking pot leaf this is how I turn it into a maple leaf. We go like this. We put a spike here. And again, I'm just looking at, you know, I'm just making this more than halfway. I go up here more than halfway to the point from maybe like right here, more than halfway. So then let's go here. Then let's go here and make a smaller one. As I go to the outside, I put one next to this that's bigger than the one that's on the inside. So I go like this, a bigger one that curves down like this. Then I go here, maybe make a tiny one. Then when I curve to the underside, that's where the bigger, always on the outside of each curve is the bigger spike because that's what gives it its altogether uh, um, uh, curve toward the point. So big spike here, and it's more than halfway to the point. Little spike there. We go here, more than halfway to the point. Then we can put little ones more than halfway to the point again, like this. More than halfway to that point. Let's go right about here. Let's do another one here. Look how fun this is that you can just produce a very nice looking maple leaf by understanding this pattern. So I'm all about patterns. You know, for me, they, it's the cheat code of art is learning the patterns so that you don't have to feel your way through your artwork. You can just make exactly what you're thinking by just understanding the patterns. Let's get another piece of paper so I can draw something else. So I thought I would show you that. That's what I'm currently working on. And so then leaves, you know, I've always loved how leaves and butterflies seem to go hand in hand, you know. I always like this, how you can, how you can make, you can make a, uh, you can make a butterfly out of leaves. So you see, if you look at the veins in a butterfly's wing, it looks very much like, you know what I should do is get a pair of scissors so that I can show you, but I wonder if I could just use... This thing's pretty sharp. Hang on. So we're going to go like this. We're going to do surgery on this leaf because it's going to become a butterfly. Okay. I always keep my uh, scrapers real sharp just in case I need to turn a maple leaf into a butterfly. Okay, then let's take one of these here. Let's grab another one. This, this one's more similar to that one. Okay. So then I need this side of this leaf. Uh oh, this is a Pinterest post. Let's cut this off. I'm telling you, if there's one thing that I could say has pointed me in the direction of better artwork, it is just searching, 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 and appreciating all the patterns that are out there. Oh man, I knew I was going to do it backwards. I did it backwards. Where's that other half? Right here. Right here. Oh, I could have used the same leaf. I'm such a dummy. Okay, same leaf. All right, this is a butterfly right here. And the vein patterns in a butterfly's wings actually look very similar to this. They look very similar. So look, we can take one there here. Let's put, let's put fancier wings. Let's put this right here. 
like this. We can make like a little woodland fairy. Glue it together. But I always thought it felt like strangely barbaric when people made creatures out of different kinds of living things. You know, like you make one kind of living thing out of a different kind of living thing. That always felt strangely barbaric to me when you did that. But this is fun how we have these patterns. So do you see these vein patterns? Main vein, main vein coming off here and then choo, 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 veins swooping off like this. So a butterfly's wings, I'm going to show you a butterfly's wings. One of the other things that I took the time to memorize because I love them so much is a butterfly. So let's make a curve here and a curve right here. Okay, this is the top of the wing. And then we have a top wing that's something like this shape. Okay, like this. You know, it varies. Sometimes it doesn't swoop out that much. This is kind of like one of those big silk moths. And then we have the underwing that's like this, going up, under, it overlaps. So this is, this is right here. So when I drew that fairy, when we were doing the dragon, I was thinking about this pattern right here. So then the vein pattern goes like this. We have one big vein that comes and makes a loop like this. Go ahead, look at a butterfly, look them up. We're gonna have a vein that goes up across the top of the wing makes like a loop right here. Hang on, my son is being noisy out the side window when I'm trying to do a live stream. Hang on. <laughs> he looks at me. <laughs> oh man, that's funny. I just uh, I just knocked on the window and just knocked on the window. I'm telling him to be quiet. He, he's like, <laughs> he knows he's getting recorded permanently on YouTube. So he took me seriously. Okay, so then we go like this. And I'm, I'm uh, keeping an eye on the live chat. So if you want me to uh, stop, redo anything, answer any questions, you know, I'm, I'm just waiting for further inspiration. And so uh, a butterfly is like this. If you ever want to draw a butterfly, we've got those veins. Okay, look at the leaf. There's our little model. And we've got the veins swooping off this way. Like that. So let's do the same thing over here. This one goes up. And I noticed that there's a different number of these. It's not the same number on every butterfly. So, you know, I just put a few in there. And then on the underwing, we have a loop that comes down like this. And like this. Maybe a little more oriented toward the top because it curves maybe, maybe close to the middle. Like this. Okay, we'll go one, two, three. I'm going to put four of those flat spots because here's what happens. We go curve, curve, curve. These veins curve off of that middle section like this. So then once you understand this pattern, it, you know, it blows my mind. It just blows my mind. The things that I notice uh, about patterns is that... Things we think are beautiful, they are, they are so based on patterns, so much. Everything I've ever found that I think looks pretty is based on a pattern. So watch, if you ever want to decorate a butterfly, do it along these veins. Watch what happens when I put some designs in here, okay? We're going to put a little squiggle in here. Let's just say there's a design here. This butterfly has got a little design right here. And then let's just go along the veins. Let's make shapes that travel with the vein. So let's use this shape right here. Let's maybe put one right here. Color this in. Let's put a stripe down that kind of staggers each time it hits a vein. We'll go like this. Like that. And let's put maybe like a, let's put maybe like an oval shaped thing up in here. Give them eyes. I see butterflies with those with those eyes, you know. Okay, we'll put a circle in there. Alright, same thing on the other side. And so let's go like this. And then we'll go like this. And try to make this the same as this side. Then we colored in this little section here. And then we colored in this one right here. Kind of like this. Then we came down here and staggered that stripe as it hit the vein. As it hit that other vein, we go like this and then go down this way. 
and then we put one right in here just trying to make it the same on both sides so if you ever want to do a very believable job at making a butterfly you don't have to guess your way through good looking designs you can just use the patterns that already exist in every single butterfly that we admire every day it's like the work has already been done for you all you have to do is just key into that that flow it goes you know all the colors the patterns they go with the flow of the veins that are on those things let's do this let's put a tail on it there we go put a body on this butterfly like this let's go like this go this way oh wait we got a tail we got a tail going down here I'm a little bit asymmetrical there. Let's get this one the same. But you see the point. This is how I make some believable, believable shapes. And I can design my own butterfly without it looking, um, you know, unnatural, unrelated to what we know to be butterflies. So it's just a helpful, helpful key, you know, learning those patterns. And I just love how, how we can see a, a very similar similar pattern in leaves it'd be fun to put like a little a little human body here let's make this a let's make this a person right here let's put a neck right here here's how you make the back of a head you make a light bulb like this make a jaw coming down right there make little ears coming off right here Then make a little ponytail like this. There, then I can make hairs going this way. Fun little trick with hair. You can just make lines from where it's growing. <clears throat> and then lines from where it's going, you know, you just make the lines point to each other there it's got a little fairy body put the shoulder blades in there like that <laughs> that's kind of fun huh So, let's see what we got going on the live chat. Hey, wings and things. We drew wings and things. That's what we did. I just realized. I just realized that we've got wings and things going on in here. It's a very appropriate username for this uh, video. Okay, if anybody has anything that you uh, would like me to draw specifically, let's see, we've got 47. Uh, I see 53 viewers at the moment. So, tell me if there's anything you would specifically like for me to draw <laughs> mary says i'm showing my ohio that's funny yeah it's it's the place where i was born and raised no not born but raised for sure it's hard to uh hard to cease to to uh you know be the person that you grew up as you know i'm a, I'm a lover of nature it was what what there was to do as soon as i got home from school every day in ohio ran out into the fields you know if you run out in your bare feet into a field here in arizona you'll be sorry it doesn't go well for you you got to have shoes on but in ohio grass is everywhere men those of you that live where there's grass because it rains enough men it is a good thing that you have it is so nice i envy it all right, I'm headed back over. Looking at the live chat. Would you recommend drawing before you paint? Oh, yeah. So this is from Tobias. Definitely, I would. This is what uh, propelled my painting was, was drawing, sketching. Because 
you identify where you're going to put colors. You know, what is the shape of the area that you're going to put colors in? Painted lady. Someone said painted lady. That's a, that's a beautiful kind of kind of butterfly. Painted lady. Lady butterfly fairy. It does kind of look like it, huh? So uh, let's see. We've got unicorn. Hey, that's a good idea, Arthur. While we're drawing fairies, we might as well throw in a unicorn. Let's do it. I like it. The speed which you draw. Thank you, Carol. I appreciate that very much. You know, this is what happens when it's like the thousandth time you've done something, but not to make it sound boring. I still love it. I think what keeps me keeps me doing well is I continue to love it every time. So let's cut over to our overhead camera. This is how I would do a unicorn. We've got to have a horse head first. So a horse head is something like this. We've got a big snout. We've got a significant chin on a horse. And the snout is going to go up like this. And the eyes, they have also a significant brow that goes up to a very, very tall forehead. Then we put an eye right here. We'll make this his, uh, the unicorn's other eye, and then we'll put the cheek going down like so. They have this very beautiful structure to their skull. I just love it. I, I marveled at it. You saw, um, I marveled is what I tried to say there. You saw the uh, drawings of horses that I drew uh, when, I was, when I was young in that book that I was just showing you. So I went through this whole time of life when I studied horses and then more recently in my adult life trying to uh, really refine the the knowledge that I have about them you know I added little little details to what to what I had learned already so here's the temple that goes up here and it helps that all all animals have very similar parts. So, you know, if I just go down the parts list, okay, how am I going to make the nostrils, the, the whole nose area? How am I going to make that? Uh, what kind of a slant am I going to put on the upper eyelid, the lower eyelid? I'm going to put a shadow right here under this. I think a very nice feature on a long slender face is the way that under eyelid catches a shadow there. And let's leave a bright spot right here. And then let's go like this. Now, a unicorn's horn, what do you think? Would it be here or would it be here? That seems kind of rhinoceros-ish. Let's put it up here. I don't think it's good to put it right between the eyes. It just seems like that would be bad. It seems like that would just be bad for its vision. So let's go right here. Tell me if you think I'm wrong. I'm going to adjust this according to what you think is best. So we're going to put a horn in perspective. And so I'm not going to make it too long because I want this horn to look like it's coming toward me. So I'll put a significant curve, like a smile shape, to all the ridges in that. And then I'll put a little bump, 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 just a little line like this on each one of those little guys. One, two, one, two, right there. I always count my strokes. It's such a habit. I guess doing how-to videos, I'm really in the habit of counting one, two, three, A, B, C, let's go. Just like that. Okay, so we make the opposite brow. So remember, when you're doing a horse, here's something I, I uh, would always leave out, was this significant brow. They really do have quite a brow right there that goes down to the rest of the nose there. Okay, now this is going to have a shadow that goes up here across the ridge of the nose. And then they kind of have a, a swoop from the eye that goes in that way. And then we're going to put the ears. Okay, some nice horse ears. I think about like that. That's a little bit big. It'll start looking like a donkey if I go too, too big on the ears. So we don't want to do that. Let's put these right behind that horn. We'll kind of shade this one so it stays back there. And then this one... Yeah, it opens up right about here. Here's the inside of the ear, like this. Let's make a darker shadow there that gets lighter, lighter, lighter as it goes out to create some three-dimensional concave to that ear. And then we've got the mane. Let's put hair going this way.
There we go. Put some hair coming off that. Let's put hair coming down this way. And I always like a good curve to a horse's neck. This is one of the nice things about a horse is that big curve on the neck. So I'm gonna keep lifting this neck up, up, up so that I get this feel of a, of a powerful neck that really curves up and goes onto the back like this. Then maybe comes down here. Right here attaches to a big, powerful chest. I don't want a wimpy horse. I want one with a big, muscly chest. So this is where anatomy is helpful to understand. We're going to have a collarbone that goes right up here. And the shoulders are going to attach to this collarbone right in here. And remember, you know, when we drew a... It's fun to see the similarities, you know, between this and a person. But what we have is a shoulder that attaches to half of the collarbone and a chest that attaches to the other half of the collarbone, just like on us. And it's gonna leave a concave right here. And if I put a little shadow on this side of it and on this side of it, then I can get that real, you know, I can get that, that look of the, you know how you always see that when they have the slick, shiny coat and you'll see the light coming off of it. If I make this real soft, and I make a gradient on both sides, maybe not too sharp of a line like this, I can, I can try to capture that effect, but it requires the absence of other textures. So I have to be real, real careful with my, with my uh, lines, which I don't want to spend a ton of time on it at the moment. Now, if I remember right, there's kind of a muscle here behind the ear, and then this goes down like this. There's another one down here for the throat, so we could put a shadow in here, like this. And then there's a big muscle that goes right up the side of the neck. Boom, boom, right here. Big muscle on here. A lot of this is coming to me, you know, as I'm drawing. I don't just walk around thinking about that, but, you know, familiarity. I drew it enough times in the past it's all coming back to me. <laughs> it all comes back. So I'll just make this with some soft shadows rather than those hard lines. Understanding where the muscles are is step one. And then deciding how much you want to show them is the next step. So now we're ready to put some of that mane coming down like this. And then let's just put some of the ends of the hairs pointing in the exact direction that I came from here to create the look of shinier hair. You know, I can have like some light hit in the middle of it so that it looks like there's a nice, nice sheen to the hair like this. The horse is coming toward me, so you know I can't put can't put too much of that hair in there. We could flip some up, that'll be kind of fun. Flip it up like this, go back. I can't help it, lines make noise. You hear me making sound effects? For me, lines make noise. That's all there is to it. <laughs> okay, now we're gonna have a let me try to put this all together. We're gonna to have a shoulder muscle here and that's gonna go here. There's gonna be a arm that comes down in here and we're gonna have the, the legs. Let's put this horse running because I ran out of room for the legs. So let's put one here, let's put another one here. And let's put the muscle going up here and attaching underneath these muscles. And then they've got this amazing tricep. Imagine if you just were in a push-up position for your whole life, what kind of tricep you'd have. Right there, then we've got the belly. Then let's put the neck going down just a bit before it swoops up to the butt. Like this. Then we've got the rear thigh we've got muscles going this way then we've got one two knees it's got two knees 
<laughs> it's not really. This is where the muscles come down and attach to the knee. And then we've got the calf. So this is actually the calf muscle that we would see on a person. And so this is always tricky for me, is trying to get this part of the leg to look normal. So let's make this coming toward me like this. And then let's try to make another one that's a little bit higher. I always have the hardest time with this here. Let's scrunch it up a little bit more. Let's put this muscle scrunching way up and put it going more back so that this leg is going real straight forward toward me. Notice that I make circles where I want the joints. This really helps me piece it together in 3D. Okay, so then there is the, the hoof on the front leg, but I'm going to make it not bending down so much. I made it curling down. Let's make it more like this. There, we can see the bottom of the hoof. I'll shade it. Like this. Then let's put shadow here so that we can really see that the perspective of this concave. Put a shadow there, put a shadow here. Get that shiny spot that's in between the, in between those uh, muscles. All right, then we've got a nice squarish colored butt. <laughs> that looks funny. It looks all broken. Man, I don't want that. Here, let's flatten out the hoof. Maybe more like this. Man, I can never do this position well. It drives me crazy. I'm telling you. Let's put a muscle up on this side. These muscles coming off the ribs. These are all the same muscles that are in most, most uh, creatures that have legs. You know, so I learned this set of muscles, then it's very quick to translate them to another animal. Let's put the opposite leg now going maybe a little more straight. I don't know what position it's in, in its stride, but I just think that if I put some believable shapes in here, then maybe I'll have a good kind of running position. There we go. <laughs> I hate this one. Oh man. I hate that. I hate that leg. It always beats me. The old horse leg. Let's put it like this. Not quite as extremely bent. Uh, the thing is, I don't want to reference a picture because I want to be able to put this together from memory, I like the challenge, I like the exercise of it. Well, that's not as bad to me, this shape. Okay, let's put a tail on it. Like this. Oh, we got a call. Looks like I might have to uh, shut her down here in just a little bit. Um, I'm going it alone right now. So uh, I am at home with the boys while the girls went to the beach. So right now uh, I've got to take care of my two boys. I've been away from them all day and it's time. Time for me to tend to the needs of the family. So I can't go too much longer here. But I want to finish this. Put the shoulder on here, and then the bicep of a horse is almost invisible, and then the tricep comes right down here, and we'll see that elbow. So it's very valuable to learn all the muscles. You can see, you know, in my childhood drawings, I, I learned all the muscles first, and I, and I did a not so great job at drawing all of the muscles. So you can see that just just putting them in place was job one. And then after you put them in place a few times, you start to notice that 
you are more sensitive to the specific placement of those things. And so you get more and more familiar with with uh, how to place muscles on a, sh on a uh, creature by first just learning the parts. But it's hard to get very far if you don't take the time to learn the parts list, you know. Okay. All right, there's my unicorn. Let's put more shadow right in here. I'm going to put more shadow right here, make this more concave, like it's really lifting up that that leg. It looks kind of short and scrunchy. Let's bring the elbow down. This is what this is what it's missing. It'll look way more majestic if I bring the elbow down, or maybe a little more. Bigger chest, bigger body in the front. We can always just say that it's the perspective. That's making it scrunchy. So we'll make this go down lower. Make it make it more muscly. Drop this chest down. Okay. And now if I just bring this up. See, it doesn't always require more room on the paper to increase the size of something. If I... If I'm able to do it by using depth instead of height or width, then you know I can I can broaden this horse, make its body look bigger by just making bigger parts in perspective. Okay, let's put a shadow here. Goes down here to the chest. This is about the level I would sketch, you know, if I was laying this out for a painting. Let's give it some wings. You want to? Shall we do that? Wings or no wings? It's not a it's not a unicorn anymore. Maybe I should keep it a unicorn. If I give it wings, it, what does that make it a unisys? I think I learned that from my daughter. It is then called a unisys. Here's a fun uh here's a fun trick to make things 3D. Put a shadow under something that you want to come forward. Watch this. The shadow of the horn can come right down across this face. Like that. And then if I make this part nice and dark, Put a shadow right across that bottom that brings that horn forward and then we put a shadow under it to you know make it make it feel complete let's put shadow under the hair too That doesn't really look better, does it? <laughs> I think it was better before I put the shadow under the hair. Well, it's a bit of a scraggly unicorn. But you know, it still does his unicorn thing. Still good. I think it could use a rider. What kind of a rider should we put on it? Here's how you make a leg look. Make that muscle, make that muscle, outer muscle right there. This would be the butt of a rider right here. This would be the shoulders up like this. And to get the length of this, all I need is, you know, I use the length of the hip to the knee to do this one, two to the armpit, and then the shoulder on top of that. This gives me a very very believable proportion. One, two, three muscles get those. I, I think another reason I count is because, you know, parts are a priority for me. I want to make sure that I've got the parts in place. Collarbone. And let's put this muscle going up to the neck.
make a heroic looking rider here. All right, let's see, let's see, am I missing anything? I am looking at the live chat. I liked the hair, Shadow Says May. Thank you, Mary. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad that you liked that. I just felt like it, it was uh, poorly executed. Thank you for being such an encourager. I'm going to put a shadow under this guy. Let's put the knee in place right here, then put the calf like this. And then maybe some one, two, three, four, five little toes. This person is wearing sandals. I kind of like this look of leaning like over leaning over this side right here. No wings. Melanie says, no wings. Okay, we're not gonna put wings. The wings would get in the way now. It'd be kind of hard to ride. I mean, is that a real, is that like a real bummer to put a rider on a unicorn? They're kind of a symbol of happiness and freedom, aren't they? Well, they're friends. It's giving a friend a piggyback ride. It's just a temporary thing. It's not its master. So after I get things in place, you know, I do come back. I really like to come back and try to enhance details if the, if the drawing is worth it, you know, if it's worth all that extra trouble. Just trying to get that collarbone in place, get nice big chest muscles, get this shadow here, this concave that's between those muscles, same thing on this side. You know, if you can get those muscles to look flexed, if you know where they are, you can, you can do things to make them look flexed. Okay, there we go. I like that drawing. So I think that we're about ready to call it good. Let's put a brow right in there. Let's put a little eye right in here. Put our put our rider in place. We've got a mouth there. Let's put eyes. Let's put ears right here. There we go. Handsome fellow. Riding his lovely unicorn. <laughs> yes, I make noises. Yes, I do. <clears throat> All right, Monday. What time Monday? Here, let's move this down. Then we can see the see the final picture. I'm gonna have to title this video "How to Draw a Unicorn and Rider." Now, <laughs> although it's not a good tutorial, I get in trouble for for. Uh, calling things how-to videos that are not actually how-to videos, so we better not do that. You know, definitely an annoyance I've had as well is when you get on a video that says how-to and it's just watching somebody do it real quickly, you know. I just, I just do this, it's kind of like hangout time, maybe, maybe catch a few little tips, you know, it's hard to make a, a, a comprehensive how-to video shooting from the hip like this, but man, it's a blast, it's a blast doing these, I'm really glad that you hang out and uh, talk with me in the in the comments. So Monday, uh, you know, let's see, uh, I won't be alone anymore, so we can go back to the normal time. We can do 9 a.m. Well, is that a good idea? Hmm, I'm gonna change my mind on that. This is good, because I'm still on that job. I've got to get that job done. So why don't we plan on, uh, why don't we plan? <laughs> 3.30. Isn't this funny? This is how you don't get viewers, is you never set a regular schedule for your videos. Sorry, it's all I can do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do like a 3.30 show on Monday. Okay, let's do 3.30. So sorry, Aaron, that's going to be even later for you. 
Oh. All right, I'll tell you what. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. Things are changing. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to keep doing these live streams. It's been a lot of fun. But I'm just going to say sign up for the email list. I'll send out a notification. I'll let you know when the next one is going to be. If anything changes about Monday. I'm thinking Monday, but man, I really don't know. So I'm going to send out an email to let you know. Go to MuralJoe.com. You can see I've got a MailChimp account. There's a mail uh, mailing list there. I'll make sure I send out an email to let everybody know when it is. Since we have yet. <laughs> 3.30 it is. Says. Wings and things. All right. <laughs> I'm sorry, I gotta think it through because I honestly just don't know. <laughs> well, I hope this video serves some purpose out there. It was really good seeing y'all back again. This time, it's perfect. Okay, okay. I'll keep that in mind for sure. This is a good time. <laughs> All right, I'm getting distracted. Thanks a lot for hanging out. I'm gonna head back over and uh, that was pretty fun drawing. Head back over and fade out here. And we'll see you guys on Monday. We'll do some time on Monday.